attorney and Alpha Palms resident Blair Hahn wants to make the Alpha Palms a better place for residents, visitors, and businesses. That's one of the reasons why he's running for the Alpha Palm City Council. I talk one-on-one -on -one with Blair about the issues for this edition of Quentin's Close-Ups. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and like Quentin's Close-Ups on Facebook. Blair Hahn, welcome to the award-winning Quentin's Close-Ups. Thank you, Quentin. I'm happy to be here. Good morning. Oh, you're welcome. Yes, sir. I know, I, I, obviously, you're a lawyer here in Charleston, and you're also a, a, a resident of the Alva Palms. In fact, you are running for the Alva Palms City Council, and obviously that race is coming up as, as far as elections on Tuesday. You said this quote, I truly believe that I will be able to make a difference as a member of City Council and make the Alva Palms a better place for all residents and businesses of the island. What difference have you made on the island thus far? <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, good question. I uh, see you've read uh, my website. Um, I've been working with uh, city council in the background for the last year and a half or so, talking about legal issues. And I, I believe I've made a difference um, to date on on a number of, of issues, but, but in the background. Um, this is my first time as a, as a politician. Um, probably my last time as a politician, uh, I've got a, a specific agenda that uh, I would like to see addressed. And once that's done, um, I hope to get back to uh, doing other things. What is that agenda right now? Um, the, the, the agenda is multifaceted. Um, as you well know, uh, there's been an, a lot of controversy over parking on the island over the emergency access lane that's been taken away from the connector. Um, I want to focus on the connector uh, safety for all visitors to the island. Uh, we currently do not have a emergency access lane. That violates FEMA regulations. That violates South Carolina Department of Transportation violations, I mean, uh, regulations. It also violates Charleston County safety uh, regulations. So it's just, it's just a matter of time before somebody is seriously hurt or, or killed as a result of us not having a um, emergency lane, a dedicated emergency lane on the connector. So that's number one. Uh, number two <clears throat> deals with parking on the island uh, for the public. Uh, 30 years ago, the city council had a vision uh, to provide parking uh, for 30 years. And they did so by buying the existing parking lot that's in our business section. And that worked for a long time um, because of population um, uh, explosion, really, in the Charleston County area over the last few years. And what I think will continue for the next 10 years, at least, um, <clears throat> we need to have a council that has a similar vision and looks to the future to fix parking. Uh, and, and I think that that's something that we can do. And then finally, there's the, uh, what I call S40. That was the, what the bill was. Uh, and that, that bill is on its face unconstitutional. Um, it was nothing but a vote pandering bill and it needs to be reversed. Um, it, it is not treating, um, anybody fairly, uh, on, in the four communities that it is targeted. And under the Constitution, there's an equal protection right. And if you're going to take away the rights of individuals, you have to do it statewide. You can't just pick four different communities. And obviously, I was on the Alpha Palms just last week, Thursday, and I walked from, obviously, Rifle Range Road over to the island and back. But let me ask you, what regulations would be ideal for the connector right now? Well, we, we know how to fix the connector. We know how to provide a access lane for pedestrians and for bicycles. Uh, you just have to look at the Cooper River Bridge. It's, it's not hard. And what DOT has done is just nonsense, quite frankly. The north side of the connector's bike lane dumps into an acceleration lane. I mean, I mean that, that's just, it's just craziness. Um, the, the sides of the connector are not high enough to meet current regulations. Um, the sides of the connector hit me right at hip level. So if I were to fall into the side of the connector, I would flip over and, and drop into the marsh because those are not high enough and they don't, they don't meet safety regulations. Um, it's not a difficult thing to put a, 
a pedestrian bicycle lane on one side of the connector. I would suggest to be on the south side of the connector. Uh, and then you'd still have more than enough room for two lanes of traffic and an emergency lane. Yes, sir. And sorry about the wind out here. It's a little windy out here. But I'm going to talk more about that and obviously home rule in just a second. But you also said this too. I'm not accepting any donations from my council, city council campaign, nor am I a part of any, quote, group or slate of candidates. I'm fortunate to have been endorsed by multiple groups as well as private individuals on our island. Current members of city council, free separate community groups, and multiple private citizens support my candidacy and my independence to seek creative answers to the issues that face our island. What creative answers have you found thus far? Well, the current council has done the best that they can do with, with what, what they have. Um, and they have lived through a storm that includes a pandemic that we haven't seen in 100 years in the United States. <clears throat> but as a result of that, they have been reactive instead of being proactive in, in addressing the problems. Now that we're past a lot of that, it is time to sit back and to look at the issues in a creative way to understand the, the, the needs of the island residents and craft, craft um, uh, a, a resolution that meets both the, the residents' needs and meets the needs of our visitors that come to the island. Uh, and that just hasn't been done yet. Um, it, it, it's not a hard process, I don't believe, but it's something that you need to sit back and take a little bit of time uh, and, and look at everybody that's impacted by whatever decision is made and then make the best decision that you can. What are the residents' needs there and what are the visitors' needs? <clears throat> well, you know, residents' needs uh, are multifaceted. We're, we're a residential community. Um, we need to protect the neighborhoods. We need to protect the children that play in the streets. Um, but we also need to have um, access uh, to the beach. We, we need to have um, traffic flow uh, properly uh, regulated for both our, our short-term visitors, our long-term visitors, and for our day visitors. All of those things need to be put in, into that mix. Um, at the same time, I think you need to be proactive in understanding what all of these different things cost and um, apportioning those costs appropriately to the people that use those services. Yes, sir. Blair, let me ask you, what do you think the SCDOT will do about parking north of 40th Avenue and access to Wild Dunes? Well, I mean, they don't have any, any access to Wild Dunes, SCDOT. Um, they have very limited rights. Um, their mandate statewide by statute is to maintain the free and safe flow of traffic on the roads. They do not have a mandate, nor do they have any right to control parking within their, their um, right-of-ways. The right-of-ways are designed to promote the free and safe flow of traffic. Nothing else. Uh, uh, S40 attempted to change that and put SCDOT into the mix on parking only within four municipalities on the beach. Um, and that's just inappropriate. Um, if you want to do that, let's do it statewide. Let's tell Charleston, let's tell Columbia, let's tell Greenville, Spartanburg, uh, Florence, and all of the other communities in South Carolina how they are to maintain their parking in their cities. Um, that's, that's the choice right now. Either you do it statewide or you don't do it at all. And I know the SCDOT proposed increasing parking on the island, and Secretary Hall backed away from canceling the 2015 plan. Do you think she will not pursue more parking on side streets and actually modify that 2015 plan? She didn't have a right to do any of that. Uh, Christy Hall didn't have a right to do a thing that she's done. And we need a council that will stand up to SCDOT and make them follow the law. That's the bottom line. Is there a comprehensive beach management plan that can actually ex enhance, uh, enhance uh, access as well as parking on the island? 
Well, I mean, I, there, there is a, a beach management plan in place. Uh, um, Isle of Palms currently exceeds that beach management plan multiple um, times over. Uh, we provide much more parking than any other community on the South Carolina coast right now. Uh, and that, and so that's in place. Uh, I don't see that that's going to be changed in any, in any time, at any time soon. And this is might might be a little complicated question here, Blair, but let me ask you, can you have open parking from Beach Inlet North on Ocean Boulevard and Palm Boulevard without obstructions, uh, perpendicular connector roads and parking meters? No, uh, the, 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 Ocean Boulevard is limited by deed as to what can be done there. And so there's never going to be parking on Ocean, on, on ocean uh, Boulevard because of that. On Palm Boulevard, there are areas where certainly parking could be done, but the problem with all of that has to do with the free and, and safe flow of traffic. Um, and there's also issues of um, who's going to pay for the police, for the fire, for emergency services, for trash pickup, for um, landscaping and maintenance of all of those spaces. Um, none of that is free. Um, none of that is a right for anybody. Uh, the South Carolina Supreme Court has spoken very clearly on that issue. Parking is not a right for anyone. Parking is a privilege, and you must pay for your privilege. And currently, the residents of South of, of Isle of Palms pay for the parking that is on the island is considered, quote, free, unquote. And it's not free. It costs uh, the residents of Isle of Palms over a million dollars a year to provide that park. Um, and so we need to find equitable solutions so that the people that use certain services pay for those services. What solutions do you have? Well, um, that's something that needs to be looked at. Um, there is a plan in place um, that has never been um, acted on um, to make Palm Boulevard a Grand Avenue. And that would include a, a dedicated bike lane, a dedicated pedestrian lane, and parking. Uh, that's something I think that the council needs to look at. There's a cost involved in putting that in place, but I think that's something that needs to be looked at. Um, what we have right now is controlled chaos. Um, there's no place for bicycles on Palm Boulevard. There's no place for pedestrians. Uh, we have cars backing into traffic, which again is a violation of um, DOT's own regulations. Uh, and so all of that needs to be looked at in a comprehensive manner uh, to find a solution that is safe for everybody um, and, and provides, um, you know, parking for day visitors and recognizes the rights of the residents. And I know all about that but too well because I was walking from Palm Boulevard out to Beach Inlet last <laughs> week, Thursday. But let me ask you, what's more important for the island right now? Building new homes and commercial space? are rehabbing, expanding, and better utilizing storefronts and existing homes? Well, the island is basically built out right now. There's very, very little vacant land anywhere on the island. And so that's not, I, I think, something that is, that is going to impact the island um, in any big way coming, uh, moving forward. Uh, it's going to be um, um, rehab of, of older buildings, it's going to be changing potentially the use of some buildings. Uh, and that's a natural progression. Uh, and that progression, I think, will take place over the next few years as a result of property values increasing uh, and, as a, and as a result of um, the population um, explosion. Uh, I expect, based upon a study that the um, National Realtor Association released this summer, that the Charleston metro area will double in size from 1 million to 2 million people uh, within the next 10 years. And that's going to do nothing but exacerbate the issues that are on the island. And so we need to see that that, that is coming and react accordingly. Where on the island do you identify and also develop those unique characteristics in absence of the, uh, obviously when it comes to residential, commercial, and mixed use? Uh, ask me that question again, Glenn. I don't think I'm following Yes, sir. I'm sorry, but that the wind might be a little delayed here. With this, uh, but where on the island do you identify and also develop those unique characteristics when it comes to residential, commercial, <clears throat> and mixed use? Well, most of that has already been set aside. We have a business district uh, and we have the county park. Um, that area will always be a business district. Uh, and, and I think that, it, you know, that will redevelop 
um, and as we are already starting to see some redevelopment in that area. Uh, and, and, and I think that, that that's a, a vital part of the island. Uh, we have two other um, smaller shopping centers um, also on the island, and that area will continue um, to thrive. Um, the, the rest of the island uh, is um, residential for the most part. We have a marina. Uh, there's a, a lease at the marina that unfortunately um, doesn't end until 2045. Um, and that's probably not a very good deal for the, for the island right now, but that lease is in place and the island will uh, recognize that lease and, and abide by the terms of the lease. Uh, and then you get into Wild Dunes, and Wild Dunes is its own separate entity, and, and they're going to do what Wild Dunes wants to do. And uh, I think they're very good neighbors uh, and have done a good job developing that, that end of the island. Can you identify any housing trends in your community, such as increase in absentee landlords, mortgage foreclosures, decreasing home values, and even, even increasing mm -hmm. housing prices? Um, <coughs> Excuse me. Housing prices are increasing uh, very quickly on the island. Uh, the reason for that is that we are one of the few communities on the East Coast uh, where people can live in a beach community, uh, have a 30-minute drive to International Airport, and, and have a 30-minute drive, and you're in the middle of a very vibrant uh, downtown Charleston area. Um, you have to get um, into South Florida before you have the same types of things available this close to the ocean that we have here. As a result of that, we've got a lot of people coming here, we've got a lot of people looking to buy property here, and that's obviously going to push prices up. So that's, that's happening, that's going to happen. Um, there is an issue on the island with absentee owners that are renting their property and renting their property on, you know, for, through um, uh, Airbnbs and those types of, of services. And there's nothing wrong with that. The problem that, that results from an absentee owner doing that and not using a local property manager is you have nobody on the island if something goes wrong. And so I think it's something that the council needs to look at going forward is potentially requiring that uh, <coughs> a local property owner be connected to any short-term rentals on the property so that we have the ability to address issues as they arise uh, on any short-term rental. How many short-term rentals are there on the Isle of Palms? Uh, well, huge numbers of short-term rentals. Um, the Isle of Palms is one of the few communities left uh, in the Charleston metro area uh, that has um, vacation rentals and short-term rentals. How many short-term rentals are, I mean, how many resident, resident occupy homes are available, actually? <clears throat> I don't have those numbers. Um, I, I don't want to speculate. I, I just don't have those numbers, Gordon. But it's, it's a large number. Large number, yes, sir. And how many days are actually allowed for those, these short-term rentals to be actually rented out? Well, that depends on um, the property. If you want to keep your 4% as uh, if you want to be a resident on the island and have your and rent your residence, keep your your four percent tax assessment. You can only rent your property ten weeks out of the year. Um, if if it's if you're not concerned about that, it's a second home or it's a rental property, then you can rent it year round. And what is the maximum sales price for residents occupy homes? I, I don't know. Um, we, we are over a thousand dollars a square foot right now. Okay. And let me go back, obviously, to what we were talking about earlier, but let me ask you, what is the household type right now on the Isle of the Palms? Is it single? Is it family? Is it mixed use? There's a little bit of, of all of that. There's a okay. huge um, family contingency on the island, okay. uh, a large number of children. Uh, it's a great place to move and to raise your children. Uh, we also have a large retirement community on the island. Um, so, and, and, and that is only going to increase over the next 10 years. What are those household incomes? I don't have, I don't know. I don't have those numbers in front of me. And, and when you, you talk about homes, how many homes on the island have been built at a fairly consistent rate? How many homes have been built? I'm sorry. I, I, ask me that question. Oh, no worries. Uh, how many homes on the Isle of Palms have been built at a fairly consistent rate? 
maybe the, we are continuing to have uh, homes renovated and built right now. Uh, um, the majority of those houses that are being built and renovated are second homes or primary residence. Hmm. Um, there are some homes that are being um, built as as rental property, but as prices increase, uh, we will see less and less of that because it doesn't make sense financially um, to to pay the kind of money that you have to pay for for these houses uh, and then to rent them on a weekly basis. So we'll see we'll see less of of weekly rentals and more second homes and more permanent residents, I, I believe, in the next 10 years. And what is that new construction housing trend on the Alba Palms? <clears throat> um, I mean, as far as new construction, uh, I think we're, we're probably have either met or, or, or passed the peak of that because there is so few um, lots that are available uh, for people to build on right now. And when you talk, obviously, about businesses, how do you help those businesses locally to boost their competitiveness among other businesses that are coming onto the island? Um, <clears throat> most of the businesses, not all of them, but most of the businesses on the island um, are, enjoy a very strong um, um, following right now. Yes. Um, I know the restaurants on the island are almost all full every night. Um, and one of the reasons for that is there's a limited amount of commercial space on the island. And so there will always be a high demand uh, for those types of businesses on the island. Um, they're, they're, they're all doing very well that I speak to. Uh, I'm sure that there's going to be you know, a, a business somewhere on the island that's not doing well. And, and we'd have to look at that individually, but but most the, the business community as a whole was very vibrant on the island and doing quite well. Would you be in favor of creating a business preservation alliance? A business preservation alliance? I don't know. Uh, I, you know, I have to look at that and, and see what what that was about uh, and what they're attempting to do. I, I just don't know the answer. Oh, no worries. Now, let me get back to the, uh, well, as you mentioned, the Alba Palms Connected and obviously the safety issues there. <clears throat> How would you push, push for safety measures within the region's new and existing transportation facilities? Well, I mean, this, the safety regulations that, that need to be put in place on the connector uh, are, are not in dispute. They all exist, and they are enforced on um, um, bridges and, and causeways statewide. We just need to make sure that DOT does the same thing here. And let me ask you just a basic question, Blair. How do you protect <laughs> the natural environment on the Alba Palms? Um, Donald has done a very good job, I think, in the last um, few years in doing that. Um, it, <coughs> excuse me, it's something that it's an ongoing process. Uh, it, it has to do, you know, it, it's something you have to deal with daily uh, because of the number of people that come to the island on a daily basis. Um, but, but you do so by, by restricting uh, building um, in the dunes close to the, to the ocean. Uh, they've done that. Uh, the island's done a very good job with doing that. Uh, you do that through beach renourishment. The island has done that, done a very good job um, with that. Um, and and you, you do it through uh, community outreach and understanding uh, the, how fragile our community is, how fragile the ocean is. Uh, and I think that the island as a whole does a very good job of, of all of that. What is the city's current operating budget? Roughly $20 million a year. And what current revenue trends are there on the Alva Palms? <sighs> 10 years, going out 10 years. Um, I, I don't know the answer to that question. And that, that's an interesting question. And the reason I don't is rental properties generate more of a tax base than residential properties do. Um, the island is, will by definition become more residential as a result of the issues that I've previously talked about. Population growth, um, property value growth, etc. Uh, so that will move property from a 6% tax base to a 4% tax base. That's a, a one-third reduction in property taxes. However, 
the because of the value of the property rising, uh, that will more likely than not um, uh, compensate um, for that that trend. Um, so it's something that that I don't think anybody knows right now, and it's something that's just going to have to be watched. Uh, but but the island is is providing the services that it needs to provide right now, um, and I think is in a good position. How can you ensure growth on the Alva Palms with smart growth? Well, I, I don't know that there's going to be growth on the Isle of Palms. Uh, as we've said before, the Isle of Palms is built out. Um, there is going to be uh, managing um, just the people that use the island. Uh, and that has to be done in a way that, as I've said before, protects um, the rights uh, of the residents of the island, uh, as well as the rights of those <clears throat> That, that use the island, that come to the island, whether it be a weekly vacation or whether it be uh, for day trippers. Uh, but everybody has to understand that the cost involved in using the island exists and that that cost has to be paid by someone. Uh, and it's only uh, equitable for everybody that uses those types of services. Again, fire, uh, police, emergency services, um, trash removal, et cetera, that they use, that anybody that uses those services uh, has to pay their fair share for it. Um, and and that's, that's something I think is fair uh, and that nobody can really argue with. You talk about a lot, obviously, about the public safety. And as you know, right now, the city is in the midst of trying <clears throat> to hire a full time a fire chief. Last week, I had a chance to talk with uh, Chief Ken Briscoe, who's obviously the interim fire chief. Nice guy. Yes. When it comes to the city code on hiring, how would you change that in the future? Um, there may, 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 may ultimately need to be some tweaks. It's, it's unfortunate that politics got involved in the hiring of a fire chief. Uh, that never should have happened, but it did. And um, the current city council has worked through that. I think they have found a very good solution with Chief Briscoe, who is living at the fire station so that he can understand our fire department from top to bottom. Uh, and once he's done that for a few months, he is going to make recommendations to the city. I don't think he can ask for anything better than that. Uh, and so I'm very pleased that he's here and that city council worked with the city administration to make that happen. Um, <clears throat> going forward, uh, city administration uh, ultimately has uh, hires and fires um, those level individuals, whether it's the police chief or the fire chief um, or other top administrators, but they do so at the pleasure of city council. And city council needs to be engaged, but they need to be engaged in a non-political way so that there is unity ultimately in the hiring of individuals and the support that those individuals need to be able to do their job properly. When it comes to uh, when it comes to public safety, and as you know, you, you talk a lot about the region's population. What are the last figures for the population on Alva Palms? <coughs> Alva Palms has permanent residents of about forty five hundred individuals, uh, and it ha and that population grows uh, upwards of thirty to thirty five thousand people on a busy day in the summer. Yes, indeed. And what will be that population uh, projection in the next five years? I don't know that there's much that you can do with the, the 30 to 35,000 population uh, or, or, or figure as far as individuals that are on the island on any given day or a busy summer day. Um, the island's only so big. Right. And, and I, I believe it's maxed out at that. As far as permanent residents, uh, as I said before, I expect that, that number will increase from the 4,500 um, over the next few years as more people uh, move out here permanently. And I forgot to ask you this, Blair, but what type of public parking would you have on 42nd Avenue? <clears throat> I believe on 42nd Avenue, there is some public parking right now uh, as far as, as how to change that public parking. Uh, I don't have a, a, I'm not prepared to address that on 42nd Avenue right now. Uh, it is an emergency access, uh, and it needs to stay clear for emergency access. Uh, there is parking there for um, golf carts, and there's some limited parking there for cars. Now, if you're elected to Alva Palm City Council, what would you do on day one? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> on day one, I 
on day one, um, I am very concerned about um, S-40. Uh, it is bad legislation. It is legislation that was put into place to pander to voters, uh, and it needs to be reversed. Uh, I would push the um, city council to take aggressive steps uh, to reverse S-40 uh, as, as soon as possible. Um, you, can, you just cannot allow unconstitutional legislation to stand. Why do you think the Alpha Palms was only the only beach community in some people's minds, the residents I talked to, fighting this beach bill? Uh, that's, I don't believe that's true. Um, the beach bill, again, on its face is unconstitutional. Uh, it became a very personal fight, unfortunately, uh, between the Isle of Palms and uh, the beach access group um, out of out of Mount Pleasant. The reason it became a personal fight is because the Beach Access Group had a, a Facebook following of about 10,000 people. And the two state senators that split Mount Pleasant saw those as potential voters. And so they fueled the flames and, and allowed what should not have been uh, a contentious issue to become very contentious. And they did so sim simply because they were pandering to votes. Uh, I'm very disappointed in both of those senators for doing that. Uh, and, uh, but, but, you know, maybe that's what's expected uh, of career politicians. Do you foresee the city having any plans to take legal action against S40? Absolutely. If I'm, if, if I'm involved, absolutely. Uh, again, it's unconstitutional on its face. Uh, you cannot, under the Constitution, require one group to do one thing and another group to do something else. It's equal protection. We all have to follow the same rules and be subject to the same uh, regulations. And S-40 uh, on its face does not do that. And so that needs to be changed. Now, how they change that? Maybe the legislature will say, well, you know what? We are going to exert control over parking statewide. Uh, I don't think that, that any of the major cities would be happy with that, but maybe maybe DOT is going to do that. Um, other than that, they need to do what has been done uh, in this state since the 13 colonies were originally um, um, set up, and that is home rule. The people that are in the area, the politicians and the municipalities that live in the area on a day-to-day -day basis know best how to handle those issues. And, and that has been a long-standing rule in South Carolina. Uh, it applies to every community in South Carolina except for four. And um, that needs to be changed. The Barrier Island Preservation Alliance is to foster dialogue and community engagement to address the unique challenges of Barrier Island speeches in order to advance the safety and quality of life for residents and property owners and preserve the beaches for all to enjoy, according to their website, how have you fostered a dialogue by engaging with that community? Uh, I, I, I think the people that are um, part of, of the Barrier Island Preservation Alliance uh, are um, very interested in preserving um, the, the beaches for everybody. Uh, and they're also very interested in, in preserving the residential feel of the communities that are residential. Um, They've done a very good job, in my opinion, uh, in, in what is a startup um, group uh, that I think will be around for, for a long time. Uh, I support them and I support the work that they do. What has been the biggest thing that have actually changed on the Isle of Palms in the past four years in your mind? The, the biggest change that I've seen in the last four years has been um, the um, uh, anger and animosity uh, that many people have started to show towards um, Isla Palms. It's something that I don't understand. Uh, our current mayor, uh, Jimmy Carroll, has been told by both the Isla Palms police chief and the Mount Pleasant police chief, that he has had credible death threats over parking places and that he should therefore carry a gun with him at all times. 
He's not going to do that. But that shows the absurdity of what has happened on this island over an, an issue that should not be an issue. Nobody has ever said that people can't come to the beach. Of course, the beach is open to all, uh, always has been, always will be. Uh, but because of a pandemic, the governor of the state directed the, the local municipalities to control the number of people in those municipalities. And so for a very short time, city council did the best that city council could do as far as limiting people coming to the island. Uh, and there was a huge backlash, a backlash that quite frankly, I don't understand because other communities were doing the same thing. Um, and, and that's something that need, we need to get over. We need to move forward from that. And we, and we need to understand that there are costs involved in everything that everybody does. And we need to address those costs in an equitable manner. Um, but, but over the last four years, really over the last two years, uh, this, this anger, uh, is just, it's, it's, it's very sad, uh, just to, to think that we as a community, um, we're going to treat each other um, in this manner. And I, this might be a redundant question, but do you think all the restrictions that the city put in place during COVID regarding parking on state roads were justified? Uh, they were doing the best they could do at the time. Uh, and they were following the mandate from the governor's office. Uh, it was for a very short period of time. Um, and, you know, the governor said that, that, the own, that, that nobody was supposed to use the beach. That's what the governor said. It wasn't what, what I, Tom said. Uh, and the only people, uh, based on the governor's mandate, that could walk down to the beach were people that owned beachfront property and they could walk on their own property. Right. Um, he was doing that in an attempt to try and stop crowds. Um, Donald Palms was reacting to that, but that was not something that they put in place. Uh, it was something that the governor's office put in place. Blair Hahn, thank you so much for your time. And again, welcome to the award-winning Quentin's Close-Ups. Thank you, Quentin. Hope you have a great afternoon. Likewise.